So welcome to Pokemon TCG Center. Um, the stream should start in a couple moments. I just need to share the link on my um, Facebook page and then we can basically start playing a game. So in this video I'm gonna play with Lone Executor. Um, this is the deck that I just decided to um, play and it's a really funny deck to be honest. Um, Pretty much you can one hit knockout or two hit knockout anything um, with that uh, Tapulele which is uh, also um, very annoying because uh, all Pokemons in this deck are actually one prize attackers and uh, it's a really nightmare for our opponent to get chance basically to um, take two prize cards, especially if we don't have a single top level on the bench, and that's just insane. So this is the deck list, some of the cards inside, um, for example, top Lele with the magical swap, so we can uh, swap damage counters, of course, um, Tapu Koko who can use fly flip, um, there are also uh, single prize and energy attackers all on executors with 160 HP. Some other Pokemons like a Smurgle, Second Coat, um, and many other. You can also win. Um, you can also win a giveaway. As you can see, the card in the middle right corner. It is a. PSA 8 Charizard from the Evolution. Once I uh, reach. 500 followers on Twitch. I'm going to give away um, this card to one of my uh, followers on Twitch. And this is definitely not a good start at all. I mean, I'm starting with Top Lele, but okay, it could be even first. At least uh, the good thing is that I can discard two energies, so I can have two different energies for that Smurgle second coat in my discard pile. And then I can simply trade them if I will need it. Okay, I can take three extra cards. None of the cards are actually good, but it's perfectly fine for me. All right, kind of like this broken field because I can also use advantage of it. Not that bad. Alright, so Cynthia number one. I'm going to play against Lucario, that's gonna be also one energy attacker from the other side of the field. But uh, without the Ancient Regirock, my opponent is not gonna, will not be able to one hit knock on my executor because he's 160 HP Pokemon. On the other side, Regirock is weak on the grass as well as the. Um, Lycanroc GX, so that can be definitely my advantage in this game. Alright, also like the fact that there is artillery available. So what I need to do here, um, basically I'm going to throw out these two cards, because I'm looking forward to pay one retreat cost um, with my top Lele, so I can simply move it from the active position. And after that, I'm gonna play Cynthia. Hopefully, I can find at least one more Exeggit and put it on the bench. Um, looks like I can't. Still, not a big problem. I can retreat onto my Mr. Mime and basically pass the turn down to my opponent. So, hopefully, I can find some useful cards like the Ultra Ball or maybe Octillery Top Deck. But I have Rescue Stretcher as well, so even if he can somehow knock out my top Lele, I can bring him back into my hand and use Advantage of N, for example, so that might also be a good advantage. So there is the Bloodthirsty Eyes, as I was mentioning, but he decided to target my Remorite. And he also decided to play that N. Wow, that's a very amazing. So, what do we have here? We have Counter Catcher available. That's a pretty good one. With the Counter Catcher, I can target his Regirock, for example, as well as a Lycanroc. I think how I'm just going to target Lycanroc and deal as much damage as, as, as it possible. So, I took 130. 
All right, sweet. So, time to move on with the Sycamore. Okay, so what do we have here? Um, we have Fighting Energy, we have that Ultra Ball available, obviously for the Smurgle. Then we have that Rescue Stretcher as well. There we go. And it's time to use that second coat. Alright, so will that be enough for the one hit knockout? It will be, so that's a 220. That's insane. So we're moving on to four prize cards, and there's Ex Execute and Fire Energy as well. I don't think how my opponent actually see this coming. There's just no way that he see that coming. Um, that's insane. Alright, so one Sycamore for seven. That was pretty much it, so it's my turn again. Once again, I'm going to play Sycamore for 7. And that's gonna be it. I have enough for the knockout. I'm not gonna have enough for the knockout against this one, that is for sure. Can't use advantage of the counter catcher, but I can, for example, grab myself Ramrod and put him on the bench. So that's not a bad idea at all. Energy can definitely go somewhere, but at this moment. I don't think how I'm gonna need it. Yeah, let's just Tropic Shake for a hundred. Another easy knockout and the card is M. So I pulled M. Not bad at all. And there's a strong energy. So right now he can start to use those Cyclone Kicks one hit knockout basically my executors without too many problems there's another lily only for one card okay and one cyclone kick for like 160 I definitely need to find a way right now to respond there's a Cynthia all right so at least something Definitely time to move on with the Cynthia. Hopefully I can find Octillery. Unfortunately, I cannot. So that's definitely not good. But it's perfectly fine. I mean, I can use that Counter Catcher, but... Counter Energy, but I don't think I'm gonna do it. There's like five energies in my Discord pile. Um, this energy just provides colorless type, which means that I can't attack with my Executor because it's not a grass. So it's time to pass the turn. That's literally all I can do. Maybe for the next turn I can play... Hmm. Ah, Sycamore is needed. So I need to play that Sycamore anyway. And there's a Guzma for my Executor. Alright. means that still I can't use that fly flip attack. Uh, all right. So 
So, we're going with the Sycamore for seven. And this is definitely a treat. And pass. Will there be enough resources for Nakata against that Lucario? I don't think so, but my main target and focus are gonna be those Rockruffs and Riolo, and after that, that Regirock on the bench. If it will be possible to do that with the top Layla. We're gonna see that. Okay, really nice. There is a Professor's Leather, so at least grab energy so he is down to two price cards right now it's actually um, very even game I simply need to find some of the good resources lighting energy sounds like a good idea Hand for four. I hope I'm not gonna miss Executor, but turns out that I miss it. I still can use that M, and I didn't find it, so that's obviously not a good sign at all. I can basically just fly flip, that's literally all I can do. So with like one, two, three, four, five energies. No, there's a Guzma play for my top Lele, and obviously he can knock me out. So that's gonna be a hundred and uh, yeah, hundred and ninety. Okay, so close game. So the game number one was a very close game. Should move on to game number two. Alright, this hand looks much better than the hand in the game number one. Alright, so time to play that Bridget. And I'm gonna do something like this. One energy attachment, and I'm done with my turn for now. So there we go. One fire energy attachment, Tapu Koko, just because of the fly flip. Looks like how I'm gonna play against um, Ultra Necrozma deck. So in my opinion, I should have a really easy matchup against that deck as long as I can uh, avoid playing those top levels on the bench because it's gonna be hard time for my opponent to pull six price cards versus a uh, one price attacker. I can already see that coming. Plus, he needs to have from turn to turn resources to recharge his Necrozma as well. So, there we go. He can search his deck for three metal energies and put them into his hand. Not a bad attack at all. Another execute for me. And first fly flip. There we go. Let's just roll with the fly flip. 20 for each of his Pokemon in play, which is a very important thing. As long as I can play a couple fly flips, sooner or later I'm gonna have enough damage counters to just use that magical swap and take multiple knockouts in just a single turn. Of course, my main focus are gonna be those uh, Magna Zones and of course main draw support artillery. So basically, still wondering what's gonna happen next. After that bridge is turn one for both players. I just stacked with two puzzle of times and there we go, he decided to play that end, so I'm really happy to see it. Okay, cool, I have Ultra Ball and Mellow available. 
that's a very good thing. That's a pretty damn good thing. Alright, so the first Magnuson just hits the plate. The question is, will he have four energy cards to accelerate his Dusk main across me so he can, you know, hit me for like 220 minus 20 for the resistance, but still doesn't matter too much. There's a Beasle hand for only one card. I really want to see more Pokemons on his bench so I can even have more damage counters on the fly flip. Somehow very important thing. But how the thing's looking right now, I'm, I'm just comfortable by playing that Ultra Ball. Um, okay, so he can have three energies with the Surging Magnet. I'm very comfortable playing my Float Stone, using that Ultra Ball, you know, getting that Octillery in play. And then disrupting my opponent with the um, N. So next turn I will have like 160 damage available. Yeah, it's definitely time to use that end because I know that he have like three energies available in his hand and I simply don't want to allow him to have th th that many energies in play. That is for sure. So we're gonna do something like this. This is basically a this is basically energy attachment to one of my executors and the uh, executes and uh, I decided to evolve another executor so um, I definitely need to place energy somewhere but if he have access to Guzman enough resources he can knock out my executor and I can still lose like energy and executor so I just decided not to do that so I have at least 50% chance to keep one of those two things in play. Um, but for now, of course, for me, the best way out is to spread more um, damage with the fly flip. This is literally all I really need. I just simply need to have as much possible fly flips from turn to turn. And there is magnetic circuit for my opponent. Okay. And he have like three energy cards available huh, okay one two three four there's like a hundred and sixty damage counters in total in play which means I can possibly target that Magnuson and knock him out which is probably not gonna happen I need to respond knocking this Necrozma out somehow or maybe bridge the top deck Bridge, it just makes no sense. It's time to play two puzzles. It's time for another N. But I hope I can find what I need. First N and then a Beasle Hand. Unfortunately, I didn't find what I was looking for. Whew, that's definitely not good. I still have that Abyssal Hand available, which can potentially give me opportunity to get that energy card. Nope, didn't find it. Yeah, it is how it is. At least I'm, I'm gonna have that, uh, that Tropical Shake for like 60. That's 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 okay. Right now, I spoil that magic magical swap to my opponent, and there's like a hundred and two hundred and twenty damage counters in play, and there's a max potion. Obviously, once I put that top Lele on the bench, he just decided to get rid of all damage counters with the max potion. That's 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 a normal play, and yeah, that's definitely not good. But still. I'm in a very good position as long as I can spread more damage with the fly flip, that's for sure. And after that fly flip, I'm just gonna need to target the Magnezone and for my opponent game is gonna be over because I don't simply see how, how he will be able to recharge so many energies to attack. But still even in this position, he needs to have like two more energy cards to do something out from this. And there you go with the Cynthia, so hopefully there is not gonna be another max potion as well. Okay, so metal flying pan. 
takes 30 damage less from your opponent attacks after applying weakness and resistance. And there's another metal energy card. And another one, so there we go. Another knockout is available, that's for sure, and one of in hand. And Professor's Leather as well. Alright, so he can attach two more energies on, on his Necrozma if he wants. This time, energies are gonna be attached to the bench in one. Well, I guess I can try maybe to take a knockout against Octillery at least. Maybe, I don't know. There's a professor's letter. Well... There are two counter energies available, so... Hmm. Not that bad, I guess. The question is, can I get one of them? And the answer is, yes, I finally managed to get one of them. And this is going to be very important knockout on the bench against that Magnemite. So I can try to knock out next turn this Magnazone as well. So there's like 120, 140, 160. Exactly enough for the magical swap. That's brilliant. Alright, so two metal energies can be recycled. So I still have more price cards than him, basically, in that case. My opponent can't. Use his Sun Eclipse GX. But we have again four energy cards. And he can use advantage of them. One, two, three, four. I have like technically five available. No question, this is going to be Guzma play for his Magnazone and the knockout against him. Um, I'm definitely going to do that. It's definitely time to do that. And one counter catcher. Oh, interesting. Never mind. Tropical Shake for the hundred. More than enough for the knockout. So there's another choice band as well. 150. So if I can hit for 150, I can't have enough for the one hit knockout against that Necrozma. But the good thing is that I can then use Magical Swap later. Still, he needs to pull so many prize cards. That's gonna be knockout, no question about that. He can definitely use that Meteor Tim test if he wants, but he needs to discard three energy cards, and that's a very, very, very high amount of energies to recharge them back, so... Especially if I hit him with the end. There's the Super Odd. Again, I have... Countercatcher and Mellow available, so technically I can get any two cards from my Disco Pile back into my hand. So, 190 plus 90, 280. I, I just need to have 280 damage counters in play and I can take three prize cards in a single turn if I want. And there is the Skyla play, so what he can get with the Skyla, let's see. Or Ultra Ball. Maybe he wants another Magnemite in play. If he decides to go for another Magnemite, I have Counter Catcher available, so that's gonna be easy price target with my Exeggutor. No, he decided to go for the Tapu Lele. That's even better in this case. 
who knows what he will decide to grab. Maybe Sycamore for 7. That makes a lot of sense because you really want to set up two Magnemites if it's possible. Now he decided to go for the Bridget. Okay, but for this turn he unfortunately cannot set up those Magnemites on the bench, so only for the next turn. And what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna definitely target his artillery. I'm still wondering how smart that would be. So, second code for the grass. the bench the game could be over for me but then again I need to pull like three cards in addition to that Okay, for now I just need Executor and... And maybe... But just maybe Professor's Ladder. So I can actually... I'm gonna get rid of it. Turn so a bezel hand. So tropical shake for like a 150, which means the next turn with the magical swap, I can swap enough damage to get knockout against that top lele. Which is an amazing thing. Again, I can also swap damage and knock out one of his Necrozmas as well, but with 150 in play, I can even take three knockouts by knocking out his Octillaries and two Magnemites if he decides to put them on, on the bench. And there is the Bridget, so he actually decided to do that. I might just lost the game right now. Because I need another puzzle of time. So damn badly. If I miss that puzzle of time, then obviously the game is over. And I miss it. You got to be kidding me that I just missed that puzzle of time so I can use that fill blower and take advantage of my tropical shake. Energy Guzma is basically all he needs, but he also needs that Magnezone. Alright, at least I'm down to two prize cards, so right now we are equaled. If he knock me out, I can still use that magical swap, but there's like a hundred damage in place, so not enough for two, two Pokemon knockout, and uh, yeah, he still needs that Guzma. Oh, there's a Skyless, so at least that's a good thing. Uh, but again, I'm not gonna be in a position to take a one-hit knock against that Magnezone, against that Necrozma. But I might just be in a position to take one hit knock against that Magnezone, possibly. 
still have like one energy. One, two, three, four, five. Nah, I'm not gonna have enough. Professor's leather, so he can grab himself a couple more metal energy cards. Yeah, there we go, two of them. I guess he should not go for an it against the top of Layla. Four energy cards. It's just not enough. I mean, magical swap and end could work, but still. Yeah, I mean, magical swap and end will definitely do the good job. I just need to find that end. So obviously I'm gonna need to pull that either way and or puzzle of time. And with the puzzle of time... <sighs> I can't recycle so many resources back. I simply can't. But obviously Magical Swap should knock out that artillery on the bench and and will put my opponent down to only one card so I will have enough time maybe to respond somehow. Again, not sure if that's gonna be possible. If I need to draw in, I also need to draw one executor as well. And he slashed me for 60. So he really decided to do that. Wow. I'm just just trying to find a way how to win this game so 20 40 60 80 100 130 so i have like 130 available plus i have that puzzle of time as well um what can i do well i know what i should do Yeah, but I realized that I have exactly enough price cards as my opponent has, so I can't use Magical Swap. Still, I can find that last Grass Energy that I have available and swap it with my Smurgle second coat, I guess, if I get a little bit lucky. And I didn't get lucky. I simply didn't get lucky. Oh, what a fail. I want 20. So, he have three more cards available to draw. Can he reach that Guzma play? If not, then next turn I have enough damage for that magical swap. But again, if he have Guzma, game is over, so it's a very even game, with a couple mistakes from the both sides. So there's a top oiler wonder tag, and all he really needs is just Oh, Sycamore play. Seriously, so he decided to roll with the Sycamore for 7. And before that, a Beasley hand for 2. So looks like he he couldn't find himself maybe enough resources to retreat and knock on my um, top level on the bench. If he can find Max Potion on the other side, then he can try to heal all of the damage from his active Necrozma, which means that I, I don't have, again... 
Oh no, he had that Guzma available and he decided to just do something like this. And there we go with the Ultra Ball. Looks like that my opponent don't have energy cards. And looks like how I'm going to lose because of the deck out. Or maybe not if the last card is energy, but it's not, it's, it's the Cynthia. Why I thought that the last card is energy card? I don't know. I don't know why I was thinking that the last card was a grass energy card. Short for the energy. That's it. If there was one energy card which I thought that there was a grass energy card, I would be able to swap my magical swap um, and just simply knock out that artillery or basically just that Necrozma and Magnemite or just Necrozma uh, for itself. But it's the GG that retreat right now available and the last card for me is a Cynthia play so it's not that I can do too much with Cynthia I mean I can't even use the sine wave I simply can't and he have Guzman finally for that top level LGX and Sun Eclipse for the last two prize cards yeah very very close game I should definitely say that this deck is a very fun to play it's a very enjoyable to play with it I mean I'm gonna actually show the deck list right now so if you just watch this video you can actually see it see the full deck list um, that I'm using so that it is And it works pretty good. That counter energy is a good one, but uh, how good it is, that bad also it is. Okay, so I'm gonna start first. Let's see what's gonna happen. No basic Pokemon. I'm hoping for that Bridget in the opening hand. Uh, I guess I can set it up with my top Lele. Okay, so we are ready to go, and flying flip will be very important. to concede moving on to another game
Okay, so I lost the coin flip. We'll start second. At least I have available basic Pokemon, which is not top Lele in the opening seven. That's always kind of important. Oh, Greninja GX. Okay. Um, at least I'm favorable against Greninja. At least, at least, at least. So there's one Froakie on the other side. So yeah, Greninja have weakness on the grass. So that's a huge advantage for something like Zagator who can use that tropical shake and hit for like 80 with just three energies in the discard pile and then with a choice ban it can go up to 110 but still not enough because Greninja is 230 so that means only one thing I'm gonna need four energy cards available also his Zora GX might be a little bit of problem in this game but I hope how it will not be so that's gonna be Bridget for the turn one and both Remoraid and Auxiliary are available which is a very good thing and I'm just going to do something like this actually something like this I'm gonna take a huge risk right there by simply accelerating my fly flip so I can have some damage counters available around the board and there's a one hands on the coin flip with the timer ball for my opponent so he can grab himself one one Pokemon put into his hand Cynthia for fresh hand of six. All right. He took one Zorak already, um, but he he didn't have Guzma available, so that's at least something. There is the first Ultra Ball as well. So Mew and I think it was Choice Ben. Yes, it is. So who's gonna get? two damage counters, I don't know, but I have Tapu Koko available for that fly flip possibly next turn, that could be a huge turnover, especially if I can hit for 120 from turn to turn, that's like 240 damage counters available for my magical swap Tapu Lele, and that's very powerful play, um, and that's also gonna be a retreat knockout. Sweet, and one puzzle of time, at the time, all right. can do next I guess I can do a lot of good things first of all I can play counter catcher and catch his top lele in the front then I can play choice band put my top lele on the bench use ultra ball and grab myself artillery and beasle him for five Hope for any sort of energy card so I can use Fly Flip. And that's pretty much it. There we go. No sign of the energy, but at least we have that Smurgle, which I'm not gonna play. I'm gonna actually discard one of those Smurgles for another Execute. And then I'm gonna play Cynthia. If I miss energy attachment, I'm probably gonna cry. Alright, so finally there it is. And it's a fighting one. So one fly flip, which is 150 damage counters in this case. 
it's not a 20 for each, it's a 150 damage attack because I have a magical swap Tapulele on the bench. I think how this deck have a lot of potential, especially if you tweak it um, to the um, perfect state. So there's a field blower for my opponent. And I'm gonna lose choice band, but that's not a big deal. If I can hit one more turn, one more turn with the fly flip, this is gonna be madness. Completely madness for my opponent. Alright, so what do we have here? So he managed to get himself a flowstone, which means this is gonna be a one-hit knock against my Tapu Koko, so I'm gonna need basically two cards. Or maybe not. I mean, technically I can I can try to find another fly flip if I really want. Um, but it's not that I need it so hard and so badly. Even hitting with my Tropical Shake wouldn't be that bad idea, especially if he won't be able to get those Greninjas in play, because in that case Zoro cannot simply one-hit knock on my Executor with 120. There's just no way that he can do that. But Greninja on the other side can. Another puzzle of time. Okay, so he took the knockout, and I top deck Mellow. Um, I guess I couldn't get better top deck to be honest. So Professor's Leather O, oh, just the Grass Energy cards, and two puzzles. Oh, that's a very bad thing. Really, it is. So Ultra Ball. Obviously for nothing. So I'm ready to play Mellow. And get Rescue Stretcher and Counter Energy as well. Then I'm gonna Beazle Hand that. I will be ready to play another round of the fly flip. This is very important right now. There we go. And there's like 270 right now. So 270 damage counters right now I have available to uh, play with it. But I'm probably again gonna lose because of the top play on the bench in the early game. All right, so another Frogadier just enters the play. And I took two damage counters. How many energies I have available? Only two different energies in my Discord pod. That's like a 60. That's just not enough. It's simply not enough. So I think how I'm probably gonna be forced to <laughs> use that magical swap next turn and simply to destroy those Frogadiers on the bench. Oh, another Frogadier. Another two damage counter goes to my Executor. Can he find himself a Guzma for knockout against him? I don't know, but if he can, it would be much better than go for the knockout against my Tapu Koko. So, Corninja. You can shuffle this Pokemon all cards attached to it back into your deck. This is a very broken thing. Um, but hopefully I can knock out at least one of those Greninjas next turn. Maybe I can. I mean, I can go for 120 max at the best day. Yeah, radio is bidding for 120. In order to go for 120, I'm still gonna need that Smurgle on the bench as well. Hmm. Or 
maybe or maybe choice bend it's still not enough for the knockout anyway it's just 180 but I can maybe force him not to take knockout and just to remove that for ninja from play but Yeah, again, was short for that one energy card, which is very important. He's probably going to shuffle back that Greninja and hit me for 110, which means I still have like one more turn to work out something right there. Like for example, play N and disrupt him down to 3, but still, as long as he have those Zorak GXs, I don't know. There's a Guzma play, so actually he decided to Guzma my... Executor, so he can knock him out and uh, scoop that Greninja back to his deck. That's also a very nice play. Really, it is. That's a very nice play as well. And. Hmm. Let's see what we can do in this case. We have minus 20 resistance. Yeah, I think how I'm gonna probably take a risk with this bad boy in the front. I mean, counter energy is all I really need. And I managed to find one, so I'm kind of happy to see that. Pretty sweet. Alright, so right now I'm actually in a fair ball position. I can take knock it against two Frogadiers. I can reduce his bench space. But most importantly, I can get rid of, the, of those Frogadiers and. After that, my main focus is gonna be that Zora GX in the active position. So I'm going to find a way to one hit knock him out. So, in order to one hit knock him out, I'm gonna need 170. 150. How many energies do I have? 1, 2, that's like 60, 90, 140, 150, 160. There we go, my friends. Technically, I could knock out that um, Zorark, but I just decided to get rid of those Frogadiers because at this moment I have minus 20 resistance, so technically he can go for 100 max, which means that he can't even pull a prize card right there. And there's another puzzle of time as well, so he really wants to rearrange the top three cards so he can play that trade and get something good. But how good he can get, we shall see. Okay, trade. And Greninja discarded. Alright, 
so waiting 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 to see what's gonna happen next he just decided to place that ultra ball and there's a ultra ball for another tapu Layla as well and with that tapu Layla, he can grab himself sycamore maybe cynthia maybe even n Will depend on the resources he have available. He decided to grab Sycamore, played for seven. At least he can refresh his hand. I do have Flowstone available in my hand, which is a very important thing, as well as two puzzle of times. Um, I can technically even take a knock of this turn. I'm just gonna need that. Yeah, technically I can have Knockout available. Which is a very good thing. So Riggy is bidding for 60. And puzzle of time for something like a rescue stretcher and actually I'm not gonna take that I'm gonna take myself a sycamore and a rescue stretcher as well Sycamore for seven. One, two, three, four, five. I can go for 150. That's enough for the knock of the tropical shake. Oh, it's oh 130? Oh, I have four, not five. Oh yeah. Anyways. It's even not that bad because I can magical swap damage to his top level, for example. cards left okay another DCE I would love to see actually retreat in this case Probably it's not gonna happen, but still. Oh, Guzma play. So he realized how Tapolele is broken in this case, and he decided just to get rid of it. Obviously for the next turn he can play another Guzma and uh, win the game basically by knocking on my Tapolele. Another tropical shake is all I really can do. Literally nothing else. And another trade. So he is potentially searching for that Guzma. And then he can Guzma any of my Pokemons on the bench for the knockout, but he's probably gonna target that artillery. Yeah, artillery is the only one who can be knocked out from the radius bidding for 80 right now. He only have two more cards left. That's insane. Can he find a Guzma? If not, who knows, maybe I get lucky and find another end, but probably I'm not gonna find it. 330. And those boys have 340 in total. So even if I have chance to magic swap, I wouldn't have enough. And there's the Atzerola play. 
who would expect to see something like that. So he can hit for 60. Zerua has been played on the bench. Lighting energy card. Um, so I'm hitting for how much? One, two, three, four, five, one thirty, one fifty. That it's another loss, I guess. So hitting for one thirty, and he probably have Guzma left right now. Yeah, rest is stretcher. Let's reshuffle a couple Pokemons back so we don't deck out. Um, the question is, can he find a way to attack? Oh, right now he can bridge it and knock me out with his another Zora for the knockout. Yeah, obviously good play. 120 plus 60, 180 in total. So that's the feat, unfortunately. I guess I should try to tweak this deck a little bit more to be more uh, more better. I really like it. I really like it, no question about that. It's a very nice deck. It's a very nice deck. Let's move on and let's play a couple more games. Really don't want to change it right now. Okay, so I lost the coin flip. Starting second with... Execute. And two puzzle of times. And Professor's Leather. Oh, this hand looks like complete disaster. But at least I can try to hypnosis my opponent active Pokemon and... Uh, hope to top deck something. Something good. Alright. So, fighting energy and pass. Oh, we both... We both actually draw bad, so... Professor's Leather. Give me some energy cards. <laughs> Seriously? Mellow top deck? Mellow for Bridge, it sounds like a good idea. I could ram him for like a 20. I don't know why, uh, but that's just not a good idea because with a strong energy he could, he could hit for 50. But anyways, he have close slash available. Oh, what a face plan! It actually happens. But the good thing about this deck is the fact that your opponent have a very hard time to do something against it. Okay, so I'm gonna take a few minute break, um, then I'm actually gonna play again, so give me a second.
All right, so I'm finally back. And another time that I lost the coin flip. I'm still searching for the first win in, on today's live stream. I really don't have luck today. Oh. Is this a Boswell deck? Or maybe... Or maybe Volcanion? We're gonna find out quickly. Goose my top deck. Obviously not good. So Hoopa with the Max Leaks here. Oh, so he had turn one Hoopa charged. Pretty cool. So two Hoopas. One Mewtwo, some sort of the non GX or EX deck for the both sides. That's gonna be interesting match to watch. Well, all I can do is simply play Cynthia. So I'm passing my turn. Probably my opponent wondering right now what type of the deck this guy play. Hmm, double horse energy attached. Alright. And the Guzma play. So he can knock me out if he wants. That's for sure, no question about that. Super Psy Ball for like a 90. Well, I guess I don't have another option than basically attach counter energy and use that in. I don't want to take risk missing another energy attachment, which actually happens. So. Good to go with the Ultra Ball. I guess I am for something like Tillery. Mm, looks like how it's priced. So I'm gonna grab another Execute and put him on the bench. And for now, that's gonna be a fly flip. Hun uh, 22, everyone. I could go for like a hundred. It's pretty much the same next turn. I'm gonna go for hundred with Electric Ball. Um, for now, I just feel comfortable going even for 20. The good thing is that if I can find Phil Blower, I can disrupt my opponent Hoop and knock him out with that electric ball. Of course, he can he can hit for 90, which is not enough for the one hand nugget against Tapu Koko. Alright, so two strong cards. 
one of them are actually mellow. He disrupted my counter energy and he decided to go with the Psy Bolt. Okay. Hmm. At least nice top deck. Um, we're gonna go with something like a Cynthia. Alright, very important counter catcher. So I can fly flip. As long as I can fly flip, fly flip, fly flip, I can uh, use much easier my magical swap and take multiple knockouts in, the, in just a single turn, which is obviously a game plan. So he find a way to retreat. That's a very good thing. Psyve much better than just Magical Swap. He can't knock out my top Lele anyway, so... Next turn I'm actually ready for that Magical Swap. So... Um, Darkness Energy attached. And go for 4. So many Hoopas, so many Hoopas. And Super Psy Ball for 70. Yeah, right now is just the perfect time to grab that Guzma play. Perfect. So I'm in search for um, Fill Blower. And with the Fill Blower, once I use it, I'm gonna simply knock out his Hoopa. Again, without Float Stone or Double Core's energy, my opponent can retreat his active Hoopa. So far, so good. Yeah, 
And again, there's a flowstone. <clears throat> so he managed to get flowstone. Alright, so another tropical shake for 60. And right now I actually have field blower for two knockouts against the boat hoopas. Which is insane. Obviously it is. And another max elixir play. So definitely next turn I'm heading for one sycamore, no question. Okay, another Fighting Fury Belt. So many Fighting Fury Belts so far. Four of them. Actually, three of them. Hmm. Not that bad. I'm taking 80 plus 10, 90. So I definitely need to retreat. I'm taking 100 because of the reverse volley in addition. Nice ball as well. Okay, so for Anguru, not bad if we... Top deck is a puzzle of time. I took 100. It's definitely time to retreat and... Uh find that important resource, which obviously is a field blower, because if I miss it, I'm definitely gonna be... Okay, so I finally get it. There we go. So that's a double knock without even trying to attack. So I got floatstone. What else I'm gonna get, we shall see. The good thing is that right now I have... Two prize knockout. So still waiting my opponent to, do, to discard that Hoopa from his bench and to put something in the active position. He decided to put Mewtwo in front. Obviously I'm going to retreat and use that second coat that grass energy. There we go. So choice pen can be used. Choice pen can be used also right there. And more than that, I'm ready to use that professor's leather as well. Just to expect what else I have left. Just a single mellow. It's gonna be very hard to pull it, that is for sure. And another tropical shake. This time for 60 once again. I'm very limited with the damage output right now, um, but it's okay. At least I took two of his four Hoopas from play. And I still need to take two more, which is obviously not that easy. It's much easier to play with this deck against... A heavy GX or EX deck started uh, to play against Hoopas, so there's the Super Road, so he immediately recycled them back. Hmm, interesting. 
interesting retreat on the top, Layla. Not that bad. I can hit for 60 more. Oh, so he can have a Wrangler with resource management as well. Instruct for one. Maybe he wants to play Guzma if he has one in his hand. earlier, he had one, so that's gonna be super disciple for 100. At least I can add more damage. Maybe not. So, Tropical Shake for 80. The game is lost, that's for sure. Just another tropical shake for 80. Uh, I'm just running out of the resources. I will have that top oil available for the magical swap, but not sure how swap will be good. Another puzzle of time top deck, another tropical shake exchange. The Nakam, we've gone down to three price cards, ran right a little bit too late. He promoted Mewtwo, he's hoping to find that double course energy so he can knock me out with his hoop. If he misses opportunity to knock me out, which he will, then I might have a chance to pull one more price card, and after that, who knows? So he decided to retreat down to resource management, which is pretty good for me. Tropical Shake, this time for 80, so right now we have 140 in play, 140 damage in play, I simply need somehow to get that end so I can return those energy cards back into my deck. Magical swap right now would do the magic. Oh, so he had adds roll available. That's gonna be a retreat or just simply scoop knockout. Well, 
again, just dealing 60 with the Psy wave. Um, but next turn I can knock him out, which is interesting, as long as he won't have an hands hammer or something like that. Yeah, but there is an enhanced hammer, so the game is over. Special charge concede. Yeah, 700 damage deal in total, but unfortunately it was not a good game. But it was definitely a good stream in my opinion. Played four games, unfortunately managed to get zero wins. Overall, it's a not easy job to win this deck, but uh, once you're ready to set up once you um, ready to attack with it and then later use magical swap you can do the crazy magic with it but simply I still think that it needs to be a little bit more improved by potentially removing those execute lines and adding more top of focus and more um, for example either way counter a strong uh, or special double course energies thanks for watching make sure to sub the channel um, let me know what you think about this deck um, so we'll see you next time so thanks for watching and have a nice day